Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, welcome to episode 59 of Luther's Question Time. I'm Ben Crow, Master Luther at Crimson Guitars, and I am here to answer your questions about guitar building in general, life in particular. That that I've done that intro like 59 times and I can never quite, I always lose it around about there. Just ask me questions. If I fancy answering it, I shall do exactly that. We have got a bunch of you in the house. Lisa is here, Doug Nabbitt, Rob Toothill, um, SE Guitars, Creever, I are our moderators for the evening, and Wolford Guitars, JS Trucking and Guitars. That's trucking and guitar building is actually something that... Uh, uh, it seems to work very well together. There are several uh, several people just in this small group of people who do exactly that, which is pretty awesome. Um, among others, there's a lot of us in the house tonight. And uh, yes, UK people, we have... Uh, um, I'm, 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 I'm trusting the UK guys and girls to let me know if... Uh, uh, our esteemed Prime Minister is uh, going to do anything that makes a difference to anything. Uh, just let us know in the comments. I'm going to assume either he quits or um, he's probably going to put in some some extra travel restrictions or something. So, uh, I don't know. Let me know, because I'm doing this, not... Uh, my live stream is far more important than his. Uh, first super chat of the evening has come in. <laughs> from JS Trucking and Guitars, uh, and he says, just getting the first one in today. So uh, uh, there we go. Thank you very much. I am assuming, I'm assuming I know who you are. Confirm that you are who I think you are before I make a fool of myself. Um, oh, and the second one, it is, there we go, it's Joe. Uh, Joe has changed his, uh, his username just to confuse me. So actually there's not multiple people in trucking and guitar building there's just there's just joe and uh, uh actually there's a there's a couple of youtubers who who travel around and make make guitars as well so uh, there we go uh, anyway joe welcome and thank you and uh, yes everybody uh be like joe if you if you have a question that is burning away at you then send a super chat through and i will 100 percent absolutely see it I've got the viewer activity tab open, so even if I miss it at the second uh, it comes through, I will go back and I will check through and answer for sure. So there we go. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with some questions from the uh, from uh, the background. We have got first question. This is via somebody on our Facebook page. They said, and I shit you not, they said, Hi, do you build guitars? Yeah, 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 we do. Um, how would you find the Crimson Guitars Facebook page? And anyway, it is what it is. We're all good. We're all good. Um, okay, so this is via Scotsman. It says, Hi, Ben. I just thought I would tell you about a cracking local charity I found today, a place in Dundee, Scotland. Always wanted to go there, actually, uh, called the Men's Shed. That's not just a local charity. We, I've got one uh, f 50 metres down the road from uh, <laughs> the soon-to-be former premises of VintageToolShop.com. Uh, it's basically a place for men to hang out and make use of all of the free of, of a load of free tools to build stuff, have a natter, etc. It costs just £30 a year. They have a wood shop, a wood turning shop and a machine shop. Yours sounds a little bit better set up than my local one. Um, I thought it was a fantastic idea and I will be joining next year. Cheers. It is an incredible idea. It's kind of a... <sighs> well, I've donated a bunch of tools to it uh, through the tool shop. Uh, and uh, in fact, again, through the Vintage Tool Shop, we've bought a lot of tools. So they have a lot of tools donated that they don't actually need. Um, you know, once you've got a full set of turning tools, if you've only got one lathe, you don't really need the next set. So uh, we have supported them by buying a load of tools from various men's sheds, men's sheds around the uh, uh, around the country uh, to generate some income for them so they can buy the machines or tools that they do need. But yeah, it's excellent. It's it's kind of like a maker's space, but more charity-based uh, than commercial. 
and uh, it does in the right area work very very well so uh, yeah there we go uh, I hope that uh, there's a bunch of people that didn't know about that that now do I hope that there's somebody out there who isn't in the UK who thinks hmm, that's a good idea I'm gonna set one of those up myself so uh, there we go <sighs> we are yeah I really shouldn't use this as a platform to just willy-nilly announce random thoughts that flit through my brain. But, you know, we're, we're considering uh, uh, potentially renting some benches out, bench space out at, uh, at Crimson for people who don't necessarily need the tuition. Hey, here's how you build a guitar. Here's how you do this. Here. They just need access to the machinery and, uh, uh, and the space to just do it. So uh, it's something that we have been considering for years. And... Uh, Covid notwithstanding, it's it's something we're going to do at some point, I think. Uh, okay, Strat78 via Discord says, Hi Ben, faced with uh, ebony fretboard blanks with some shakes, cracks and holes. What would you do to still use them? I don't have the guitar on here to show you. Uh, I really like the idea of using imperfect timber that may otherwise go to waste. We do that a lot at Crimson. Uh, I thought about epoxy, as does everyone. I'm interjecting a lot in this comment. Uh, maybe with a contrasting pigment. Any other ideas or anything I should be worried about that might become a problem? Cheers. Okay, so... You can... Ebony repairs or can be repaired fairly well. So if you've literally just got a very clean shake or crack going through it, then um, that's not too much of an issue. You can fix it with... Uh, with black tinted or brown tinted or even a mix of both to sort of simulate grain even better uh, super glues these will be obvious to anybody who's ever done it before but uh, especially as the fring uh, as the fingerboard dries uh, through the life of the guitar um, so that's one option another is as you've said to just go balls to the wall and really um, accentuate go Japanese on this word go uh, kintsugi and say hey look this is a tree I'm unashamed that I'm a tree I have some holes in me but I can still be a good fretboard in fact I can be a great fretboard there we go so yeah accentuate it with uh, with resin uh, there should not be any major issues once you have gone past the curing stage of the resin obviously it is uh, it shrinks a little bit as it dries it is exothermic so it, it heats up as it dries and shrinks to a certain percent so once you've done that and you've got that out of the way stable sorted uh, it does add weight it does add strength though now i personally think that using resin in everything has to come to an end soon um i was at uh, i was at yandles this afternoon my my local timber yard tool merchant uh, etc i suppose i'm lucky i i didn't there wasn't any wood that grabbed my fancy even though i thought there was going to be there weren't any tools that grabbed my fancy i i went into the craft center and bought a book on pouring paint and a little mixing thing i've got everything i need it's so sad. I love buying toys. Uh, okay, so uh, that being said, they had a whole shelf dedicated to resin in a woodworking shop. It annoys me. It annoys me a lot. But anyway, um, it's plastic, man. Dang it. Now, go back to my guitar that I built, the Cyberpunk 2077 guitar. Uh, what I did with that, what I did with the fretboard of that, is not to toot my own horn too loudly. I think the very best way to make use of substandard or poor quality timber of any sort, and essentially I took a load of pieces of uh, really poor quality. We're talking C, D, E grade um, ebony. And I split off strips that were of a useful 
that that were okay and then multi-laminated it up and i was i created a sort of pixelated kind of effect uh, and i s specifically tried to go for black ver black uh, sections of ebony next to lighter sections of ebony to highlight the joints now instead of just slabbing them a load together like that i also put them at angles so i uh, i had instead of uh, end grain gluing onto end grain which is absolutely problematic i had an angle cut into both pieces and i sort of it looked like my hands look now this is very bright in here tonight isn't it is this image okay i'm using a different camera anyway um uh, so I did that, I did it all on video, and I love the look. And in fact, I have a lot of uh, C-grade wood, and when we have our staffing crisis dealt with uh, and have a little bit more time to, to put towards uh, the burgeoning timber business that we're looking at, I think that we're going to hopefully try and put those fretboards into production as something that can be used bought just as a fretboard from Grimson, but also uh, something that we can do um, on our production guitars. I just got a message from Creever saying, ha, I knew it. Um, obviously, he heard me say that we had a, a new camera. So uh, uh, it turns out that a lot of the live stream issues and foibles and troubles that we have had on this live stream uh, a lot of them come down to the fact that I was using my Canon 90D, which has a, uh, a micro USB, not a USB-C, a micro USB input for the lead that goes from that to the computer that then takes a signal to you guys. And uh, the USB-C in the Canon M6 Mark II that was, that is my sort of second camera, uh, is much more stable so hopefully hopefully we'll be okay anyway i've got a bunch of super chats here um thank you very much for everybody who's sending them through and i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna answer away so here we go uh luther for builds who's also changed uh, his or her youtube channel hey ben can you recommend a supplier or brand for gold fret wire um and when I level it and dress them, they're still gold, right? Thanks. Love you. I love you too. Uh, okay. I really do. I really, really do. So, the second answer, the question came through, the answer popped into my head, and it's now it's just poof, straight through. Gone. Finished. We're done. Jessica. There we go. See, I can distract myself just as well as I can. Was I talking about? Jessica. Uh, Jessica make a hypoallergenic wire. Now, most fret wire is, it's called nickel silver. It has no silver in it. It is nickel and brass. Uh, the hypoallergenic stuff has no nickel. It's brass and other stuff. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at a, a coil of it right now. Uh, in fact, I bought a coil of it from uh, Dylan, who's uh, just finished a three-month course at the Crimson Guitars Luthery School. Uh, because he didn't need any more. Yes, it stays um, brassy, goldy coloured uh, once it has been levelled. It is harder than uh, most nickel silver fret wire. It is really good quality in general due to the composition. It's a little bit harder. It's a little bit more brittle when you're working with it, i.e. when you snap it, it cuts a different way with your uh, fret end cutters and things. Uh, obviously get them through crimson guitars and um, but I would say that if you've watched this insane debate about people saying I can you know stainless steel sounds like this and nickel silver states feels sounds like this this would be midway between the two erring on the slightly brighter it will not damage your tools much more although it does take a little bit more work uh, to level crown and polish uh, but it's a beautiful effect, and I think that all guitars that have gold in the hardware should use this, just as a matter of course. It should actually be legislated, in my opinion. That's it. Should we just, you know, let's go political. Instead of founding a religion based on New 3, should we just found our own little country somewhere? <laughs> that could be fun. 
Uh, okay. Uh, <sighs> Joe has come with another super chat. It says, any updates for GGBO 22 schedule yet? I'm starting my introduction videos, hence the change to my channel name. I got it. Okay. Um, I, I am like this close to figuring out exactly how uh, GGBO 22 is going to work. It is going to work. It is going to happen. I have got a few more discussions so that I can just nail that puppy to the wall, as certain people say. That's something that comes from a UK movie radio show. Forgive me. Anyhow. So yes, I've got a few more things and uh, that will be sorted out and, and done and dusted and I'm hoping to actually make the announcement on, uh, as I did last year, on New Year's Day and open everything up. Uh, we may well be pushing the actual official entry back a little bit. I think that... <sighs> The, the, the problem is this is a multinational kind of a thing, but I think that starting starting everything a little bit later in the year will work better, just from the point of view of working in cold workshops and uh, and all of that. So, But uh, yeah, we're going to get there. We are going to get there. Now, uh, V, Volgan Essen says, Hi Ben, how do you properly stain body, top and sides to keep a natural binding like PRS? Uh, I believe it's called faux binding. Cheers, V. All right, um, Volcan, yes. You, well, obviously you, you, prop, you, don't, you don't stain the faux binding. Um, so, uh, no, no, you're right. Oh, I'm being a pedantic prick. Please forgive me. How do you properly stain a body top and sides to keep a natural binding like PRS? In other words, yeah, don't stain the binding. Uh, to properly do it, first of all, and uh, I'm absolutely fine pushing people to go and watch other producers' content, as long as you come back and buy the guitars from me. Uh, no, uh, PRS themselves actually on their, on their YouTube channel... Uh, which is a great watch, by the way. Uh, I think they actually have several, come to think of it. Uh, and Instagram things, you often see their master builders uh, applying stain, and you can actually sit down and watch how they do it. But uh, to to be brief, you need to get some good quality, heavy-duty tissue, pa tissue paper. And this is, uh, we actually sell this at Crimson because... Uh, well, it was literally by popular demand. Where does Ben get that amazing stuff? Uh, I, I live in fear of the time we can't get it anymore. It's really heavy duty, single ply tissue paper. Uh, fold that up into, fold it up into a nice uh, actual tool. You don't want, yes, I use my nose to do this. You don't want it to be just a scrunched up thing of, of tissue paper. You will then grab your Crimson Guitars Stunning Stains. Let's uh, let's take the, uh, uh, the Spirit Stains Pink because, you know, it's great. Uh, and then essentially you'll apply the stain relatively dry. You don't want to saturate your tissue or, or cloth if you're using a cloth. Uh, now, once you've applied a couple of a little bit onto the rag you then don't go straight to the guitar you dab it just a little bit off onto another piece of tissue to make sure it's not too wet and at that point you start in the middle of the guitar you apply the stain you go across over the edge you do not need to mask the faux binding area off if you put masking tape what you're actually going to do is you're probably going to wick wet stain down exactly where you don't want it to go. The trick is to apply it only where you want it. So have nice hard edges, apply relatively dry stain going from the center of the guitar to the outside. That's very important because, because if you pull from the outside in, you tend to drag the edge of the tissue 
you drag the tissue with the stain on it over the edge and that acts like a spatula taking a stain off this and dripping it down the edge of the binding where you do not want it to go. That's it. Slow, careful. Uh, now the final tip is if you have not rounded over the edge of where the faux binding is going to be. You can leave that nice and sharp and then after the fact go back and round that over just a little bit by hand. Uh, effects may vary. I prefer to do everything, get it absolutely sanded and ready and perfect and then apply the stain. But uh, yeah, it is up to you. Alrighty. There we go. Okay, I've gone through all of the super chats. Now, Dane Nabbit is complaining about uh, complaining to the stewards. We're not going to talk about that. Um, Dan Nabbit also says, anyone else watch Ben's vid making the tiny plane? I think I would actually prefer to cut trust rod channels that way. Routers can go so wrong so quickly. <coughs> I I really had a total blast uh, making this plane that I've now lost. Wait, where is she? Probably uh, somewhere over there. Yes, uh, so I, I made this tiny little uh, rebate plane to do the four millimeter uh, channels uh, for the carbon fiber stiffening rods in the hand tool only build neck. That video went live today. It was actually a six and a half hour live stream on on this side channel, uh, Crimson Guitars Extras, uh, midweek, and that was uh, that was an experience. Uh, I have also just bought a bunch of kit so that so that we can have multiple cameras, and I'm not going to have to move things around. It's there will be more of those sorts of things. Talitha then took it; she edited it down into something really cool, and much shorter, and here we are. That being said. In all seriousness, a small router plane Yeah, I think I think a small router plane is probably the better tool. I would suggest that uh, in the hand tool only build I used a scalpel to cut down the outside edges of where the truss rod is. I then used a chisel to hog away the, the bulk of the waste. You, your truss rod, your average truss rod, is nine millimeters deep. Uh, hog away the bulk of that waste, and then I would say a small, a small router plane like this, uh, which has been made. I think actually there's a video just about this on the YouTube channel, on the extras channel. Uh, that just to clean the bottom of the channel. I also used saws. And a combination of all of these things uh, will get you the quickest, best result, minus any risk of uh, popping through the back, unless you are absolutely insane with your router plane uh, or chisel. Uh, Vulcan has come back in and said, Ben, thanks on the faux binding tip, but in particular, how do I stain the sides of the body? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Uh, very good point. Masking? Cheers, V. No, seriously. Um, Okay, so the, the issue with masking is that standard masking tape just won't do it. Standard masking tape is relatively flexible. Painter's tape is flexible stuff and has, it's almost like skin. It's got wrinkles and grain and, you know, all that stuff. Those tiny little wrinkles, unless you burnish them down to infinity, will pull the stain up from where you don't want it to be. OK, so um, you could invest in some very expensive, very plasticky fine line tape from a painter's, uh, a painter's supply house where they're supplying people who are spraying lacquers and cars and things like that. Even that stuff I've had mixed results with. It is dangerous. And the problem is once you've got a large chunk of, say, black stain seeping on a piece of white maple that you don't want it to seep onto, it's quite a lot of sanding to get rid of that. Uh, 
So no, it's exactly the same way. I would suggest that you have to very carefully uh, go in uh, with a very dry, in exact, as I said, go in dry from the edge. Now, you could make, <sighs> you could make some sort of a stop system, i.e. Uh, you, how would I even do that? Short of taping something around the outside. Basically, no, it, it's just go up to the line with this and, uh, and be aware. Now, one of the nice things is most of the time, yeah, most of the time when you are making faux binding, the, the, the lower edge of that faux binding where it is joined onto the body is that joint. And you are making a maple fur binding against a mahogany body. So you want to use the Crimson Guitars cherry, cherry red to get that lovely cherry stain. And uh, you know I don't, I don't blame you. But um, that glue line actually inhibits the transfer of stain across to the other wood. So if you go up slowly and carefully, and it is a laborious job, you can do that. Um, if, if there is anybody else in the in the stream here who has had experience with this and has got a different method, please tell us, please. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. You either burnish the masking tape down and pray to Reg, the god of club musicians, or just go slowly and carefully. Uh, I have even at times used a paintbrush, a tiny little paintbrush, just to go along that edge. Uh, so yeah, it's one of those things. Jeff Wickbird has uh, has come in with a uh, fourteen Canadian dollar super chat. Thank you very much, Jeff. It says, "Hey Ben, I'm about to hey, uh, I'm about to glue the top on my three three five build. You are so ahead of me. I've wanted to build one of those." I've wanted one of those since I was 16. Now 40. <sighs> All right. <laughs> I'm putting shielding paint on the back of the top, but I'd rather not see paint through the air hole. Do I have to shield the body? Cheers. Okay. Um, not necessarily. Look, so one of the joys of a 335 is how alive it sounds. It's not a sterile, soulless thing. You move across the stage, your guitar is going to sound different through your amp. I suppose I'm just using digital modeling. You know what I mean. So, no, I don't think it's too much of an issue. There are some things that you can do to ameliorate feedback if you want to, and if you want to be uh, particularly clever about it. Uh, for example, now I understand that you don't have a control cavity, you don't have access to the controls from, from behind, uh, but uh, if you use shielded wire throughout, then that is going to reduce your risks of uh, those, that 60 cycle hum getting in there or 50 cycle hum depending, where you, depending on where you actually are in the, in, in, in the world. Uh, so use shielded wire as much as possible. You can, your, your pots are actually basically shielded themselves. They are metal all around the internal bits and for the most part it's fine. So shielded wire is where you, where you can. If you had access to a rear scratch plate, or were very clever, you could also even make uh, mesh, little mesh Faraday cages around um, the whole wiring loom, which you can't get in through an airfoil, I understand. But you could you know, make a whole mesh thing that you can't see from the front because it's just right there, as long as you don't ground everything off. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I think shielded wires as much as possible. Even change the wires on your pickups so that those wires are shielded uh, where you can, and uh, and go from there. 
in the end, we are if we're building custom guitars, it's half about how it sounds, it's half about how it looks. Or 60-40 or 70-30. Depends. It does depend. And uh, if you've got something that's really saying to you, hey, I don't want it to look like this, then don't make it look like that. There are workarounds, there are ways. Um, up to and including, and here's something that I completely forgot, there are now uh, these magical little boxes that you can um, put into your effects loop that cut out 60 cycle hum or 50 cycle hum. They cut out that horrible feedback noise and, uh, you know, just get one of them at, at, at the worst, um, if necessary. Okay. Ah, uh, my gush. My gush? My gosh. Um, my gosh, I'm gushing. Uh, Luther for Build says, Texas Toast uses 3M vinyl tape. They do a good tutorial. I haven't seen that. Uh, 3M are incredible. And uh, yes, that works very well, but it, it works very well on paints. It works very, very well on uh, on spray paints and things that you've applied in, in that case. A thin stain a thin stain like what we're talking about here unless you burnish it down even if you're using 3m tape you are it's it, it's risky it is risky uh, but yes this is what i mentioned i said use a high quality fine line tape and by high quality i mean 3m stuff Okay, uh, Phil Gerke um, says, Hey Ben, I have a seemingly lovely billet of walnut. <laughs> Did you watch my hand tool only build where I had a beautiful four inch square that uh, uh, looks fine, but had a crack from stem to stern, from its arsehole to its appetite, as it were. Um, <sighs> seemingly lovely billet of walnut that I'm keen to use for a neck through. Pointers for determining if it is suitable. Okay, that is a very good question. And I don't talk about wood often enough and the selection thereof. Sound, tone, how the wood sounds uh, before you even cut into it. <laughs> Splinter. This is amazing, actually. Okay, so this really surprised me because that crack is there. But a lot of you actually saw me try and chop it down. And it was a lot harder than an already cracked lump of wood should be. So it sort of knitted itself back together. Uh, now, that being said, if you tap around on, on a piece of wood and you hear a dull thunk rather than, or, or you hear a change in the sound, uh, depending on where you're hitting on it, it's like choosing an anvil. If you're going to go and buy an anvil, you hit it with a hammer, and if it goes ding and rings through, it's a good anvil. And you, you ding it all the way over on, on, on a lot of the surface. And if you suddenly go from ding to ding, there's a crack in it, there's a, a bad patch, there's something wrong and you don't buy it. Same thing with wood, okay? So first of all, you want to look at the outside. If we had looked much more carefully at this, you can actually see a crack going through it, okay? Now... I should have seen that and I should have thought, hmm, that's a crack. I didn't. Uh, I was filming a video and was thus distracted as all heck. Look at it. Looks fine. Cool. That's the first thing. Tap it. Sounds fine. That's, that's excellent. The next thing is to stroke it. Please do not take my words out of context. Okay, now, as, hold on, I'm going to come right up to the microphone here. Microphone's just off camera. So 
So you can hear that. And there's no real changes there. If, however, now I, I can't actually find a piece of wood that has a major crack in it. Uh, here we go. I wonder if this would. Here we go. All right. So look at this piece of wood. This is a piece of uh, <laughs> Brazilian rosewood, um, old stock, and I've I used this to repair the standing number one the other day, and I've I've cut a, a section in, in it here. Now, as we stroke it, you can hear a whisper, and it changes tone. And that change in sound, that is what tells you that you've got a shake inside. Uh, it could be one of my favorite words in, in the woodworking industry. It could be a thunder shake. And that is, that is where uh, a tree has been felled and then another tree has fallen on top of it and just shattered the wood internally uh, sometimes. So you don't necessarily see this crack from, out, from outside. The, the worst culprit though is when the wood has been dried too fast. And you literally oftentimes won't see from the outside that anything is wrong, but you will hear it if you if you um, stroke it like that. So I got sawdust all over my computer. So that's that's where we're at. Listen to it. So if it's been dried far too fast, you'll end up with cavities internal where it's it's just gone. Wow, this is too hot, too dry, and. Uh, you don't want that but uh, chances are you will be you'll be okay Whew. and good luck with it uh js trucking and guitar says you can just stain the body before gluing the binding on the beautiful uh, sorry um faux binding is generally made out of the top itself so that's the uh, the whole prs thing uh to not mess around with gluing anything on it's 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 up there with the bolt-on neck as a, a genius idea for for saving money in guitar manufacturing while making it into a feature that people will pay more for it's great it really is very very clever um yeah props to paul for that Okay, Paul Needs is coming with £4.50 and said, which crimson stain for a classic Karina colour on a very light mahogany, please? And do I need lubricant to cut bone with a Dremel? Okay, um, to answer the last one first, because I feel like it, uh, it's easier. Not really, although I have... Not really, but... And I've never considered this before. It could actually be a really good thing. Uh, doing it in a sink, even under flowing water, will cut down the dust something chronic. Try not to get water in your Dremel, of course. But um, yeah, bone dust is not good stuff. And if you breathe in a lot of it, then you can have serious, serious issues, uh, i.e. death. Yeah, be careful. Wear a mask. Be outside if you can. Open windows, etc. Um, but in general, no. The other thing to watch out for is uh, it tends not to discolor under heat, like metal does and things. And uh, bone gets really, really hot. And I have got some serious finger burns in the past from... Uh, uh, from picking up a piece of bone that I have just been cutting, even just with a hacksaw, which is my actual favorite tool for cutting bone. Just a standard hacksaw, go slowly, you're fine. You don't need a Dremel for that. Okay, uh, which crimson stain for a classic Karina color, I'm afraid is really almost impossible to say. I mean, it's very light mahogany. I, it's, it's somewhere between the amber and the yellow, but you just don't know. Um, the, the, the beautiful thing about the stains, though, is they can be diluted. They can be uh, sanded back a little bit. You can apply, for example, uh, 
specifically the water-based stains, apply the water-based stains, and if it's too dark, grab some uh, a damp bit of tissue and rub away the excess and, and you'll be golden. Or wait till it's dried, sand it back a little bit and you'll get that finish. Um, the, 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 the tool that I bought today was actually... Just a tiny little artist's mixing dish because of the, sh the amount of time that I want to mix a tiny little bit of stain uh, or experiment with stain colors. And uh, that is, uh, yeah, that's useful and it fits in a drawer. So uh, we're all good. Um, so yeah, the best bet is to buy the stain that is the closest to the color that you want and then dilute it accordingly. Obviously, you want a darker one, but I think the amber is probably it. Uh, personally, I would say amber and brown, and then you can dilute, mix, and play around and go from there. All right. Sweet T Guitars has sent $10 super chat. Thanks very much. And says, hey, Ben, just say thank you. This, this does embarrass me, but thank you very much. Hey Ben, I'm just saying thank you for all the lessons I've learned from you. Building guitars has changed my life, and I was inspired to do this by you, my friend. Thank you, brother. It's an absolute pleasure, and uh, I'm going to go off and sort of blush in, in, in a corner if that's all right. Um, the fact that there are people... Yes, I hide behind my water bottle. The fact that there are people who have a whole new careers because because I make this look easy is so gratifying and uh, I love it when you guys tell me um, thank you um, Bri W is coming with 10 pounds and said when I want faux binding I don't use water dye I use alcohol or spirit very good point they don't penetrate the wood carving much so if I make a mistake it's easier to sand off that is that is an incredibly <laughs> we should be paying you for this tip. We should be paying you for this tip. Um, uh, yes, you are absolutely correct. The the spirit based stains, which is also what uh, Paul Reed Smith used on on theirs, uh, do they because the spirit off gases so quickly, you can get that dry effect much much better. Uh, and uh, yeah, actually, I was going with the pink spirit base as, the, as my, my option there. Uh, the water-based stains do tend to stay wetter. That whole sentence sounds so funny now that I think about it. Uh, but no, great tip there. Spirit-based stains, if you have that option. Uh, JS Trucking and Guitars. Uh, okay, we're talking... <laughs> <laughs> talking amongst ourselves that's all fine okay dang nabbit says so the image we're looking at on the screen at the moment uh this was prior to the live stream i think says why is ben wearing two watches i saw this and i had to actually go back and have a look at the um at the preview screen at the thumbnail and i really was actually wearing two watches i do not understand um but you know it's fine it's fine you know you're allowed to double wrist it if you fancy it if you like watches it looks a little bit weird but do you know what it was i've just remembered it was a watch and for for about six months i thought it would be interesting to track my steps because you know i could do with losing a little bit of weight and and all of that jazz and uh, i was wearing a fitbit for 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 about six months uh, until it turned out that frankly i'm doing 10 to twelve thousand steps in an average day in the workshop anyway and i'm still where i'm at so yeah i stopped um so there we go it was a watch and a fitbit which isn't really a watch Marcin of the nuclear village is in the house as is rob Tuchel. Frugal Fixer Shop. Leon. I love the fact that you guys are all... Um, we're now nearly 60 streams in. 
and uh, and we all know each other. Uh, we've got 121 concurrent viewers at the moment. Only 67 likes. Click like, everybody. Click like. And uh, there we go. Okay. There's a little button that's pop popped up here saying, oh, do you want to insert an advert into the stream? I wonder what that would look like. Hmm. Dave Dave says, I have a business making guitar picks simply because Ben made me one once. Seriously. You, you, have, you have to send me a link so I can buy one. That's incredible. Um, uh, Rob Phoenix has come in with five pounds and says, T-shirt envy, where did that one come from? I'm just asking for a friend. I love this. Uh, it is uh, from the same place. That... Okay. Uh, in, in Yeovil, there is a shop. Crikey, what are they even called now? Uh, hold on. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to insert an advert and you guys can rant at me beforehand. Uh, I'm going to take my shirt off and check the thing and we'll go from there. So I'm going to click on insert ad just because I really want to see what happens. I inserted an advert. Are we still streaming? Let me know if we're still streaming. Hold on. What does this shirt actually say? Doo -doom -doo -doom. Okay, uh, Boswellian Artificy. I'm going to write this in a comment. Okay, so yeah, the t-shirt the is by Boswellian Artificy and I bought it through a shop, the name of which I've completely forgotten now, which really is a, is a problem because they're selling some clothes for me, actually. Um, it's Yeovil Arts Space. Hold on. Yeah, that's it. Well, just next door from the Oval Art Space. Um, it's a record shop. They've got all sorts of cool um, things. You guys know I really struggle with names, and this has put me on the spot, so there we go. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry for the advert. I've only just noticed that button. I thought it would be uh, funny. Sorry for the ad. There we go. Okay. Um, so premium member, and it was a, an ad that could be a um, uh, five second block, anyway. There we go. Um, so Rob Phoenix, yes, uh, that's it. Uh, Boswellian Artificy is the company that make the t shirt, they're handmade, they're eco um, cloth and inks as well. And I just love the guy's style as much as anything else. So, uh, so there we go. Uh, and Kruber, I told me I was still streaming. Uh, I missed a super chat from uh, JS Tracking Guitars. Uh, what editing software does Talitha use? Okay, so we've gone through various different things. At the moment, she is back on Premiere Pro. Uh, she insisted that uh, we, by we, I mean actually our patrons, uh, buy a... <sighs> A great big Apple computer thingy, and uh, we've got a, a subscription to the the whole suite. That is not absolutely necessary. Now, I'm assuming you're asking on behalf of yourself for GGBO 22, and at the start of this year, 21, I did a video. I did a video. Talitha and I collaborated on a video where she actually wrote down a bunch of stuff. And uh, we did a video on editing video specifically for Great Guitar Build Off contestants who were interested. And there are some free, there are some cheap, there are some good, some bad options of editing softwares. Um, 
Now, Light Lightworks is one that I've used a lot. Uh, that's relatively, in fact, I think they even have a free version. Uh, professional quality, absolutely amazing. But th there are there are many options, and in the comments on that video, there will be a lot of other comments and a lot of other people saying, "Hey, yo, I use this," and uh, there is new stuff. I have a I have an editing software on my phone. <sighs> Uh, no, Creever, I haven't bought all of the stands and uh, all of that sort of stuff yet. Uh, I've got the cables and things, but uh, yeah. Uh, I have an editing software on my phone, which is amazing, and I haven't actually had to use for a long time. I think I paid 17 quid for it or something. And <clears throat> I can't find it. KineMaster, that's it. KineMaster, it's phone-based, but it's a complete non-linear editing software suite. It's amazing. Uh, so there we go. Whew. Now. Uh, Ivan Wizard uh, says, are we getting the memberships over on this channel? I missed the Cool Beans emojis. Um, I think I I so yes I think that the memberships are, are on this channel. Uh, it is now confusing because there are some members on the old on the main channel. There are some members on this one, and when we say hey, go and click on the membership. I suppose it's just going to be a case of you could be a member on whichever one you want and you're going to get the same software. So actually, yes, that's a very good question. Um, I And if you remember over on the other channel and fancy signing up on this one, just cancel that one and then come over here. And uh, because we do have we do have a lot of extra content that does come out and and here is the thing, there is a hell of a lot more content coming down the pipeline. Yeah, I said coming down the pipeline. Wow. Um, yeah, there's a lot happening. I am building... It's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. There's going to be a lot of stuff for members. So... <sighs> My issue, and you can you, you know me, you guys know me, you can tell that I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to actually say there. My issue is that while, as I said earlier, we bought a computer through literally the patron support, bought to through a whole new computer and editing rig and in fact paid for the camera that I'm talking to you on. Because this, we spend a hell of a lot of money putting the channels, uh, putting the channels together. Um, but... That being said, if I I cannot stop, cannot help but wonder what would happen if I put all of the effort that goes into making any extra content into making more content for the main channel that goes out to everybody for free. I just wonder if that would be... It would mean less money, but I think it would be better. Uh, let me know what you guys think, honestly. What do you think about that? And we'll go from there. Dang Nabbit says, I like the t-shirt, but what the hell is it? It's some sort of bird rat thing made up of other things inside it. I love it. Mm. Phil Gerke says, DaVinci Resolve is fantastic. Buy the pro version once and you're good to go. No subscription bullshit. I used DaVinci Resolve myself once for quite a long time, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't do well with software. It takes a while to get sorted, but I, I like it. Uh, Paul Need says membership. Uh, that is YouTube members basically. It gives you access to extra perks, uh, uh, extra videos, behind the scenes sort of stuff, and. Uh, now that we have got another editor on um, on retainer, 
another word I've never really had to say in all seriousness. Uh, we will be getting more behind the scenes stuff coming through. I just need to film more, which is, to be honest, the the bottleneck. Jeremy Cole uses Power Director on his Android phone for Instagram videos. It works great. Rob Tootle, just uh, with his band, made their first video using the free version of Lightworks. The free version of Lightworks is absolutely fine. I think I only ended up subscribing to the £10 a month uh, version at some point because of it just gave me a little bit more flexibility with the exported um, formats, codecs, etc. Whew. Jonathan Oki, hey Jonathan, how you doing? Uh, Cyberlink Power Director, uh, relatively inexpensive. That's his personal recommendation. Okay. <sighs> Dan Decker's. Uh, I'm sure I'm pronouncing your surname wrong, says, uh, any updates on the one-year course, please? I am doing, I am finalizing that. Um, I am finalizing that this coming week and making a decision on it. So it's something that we want to do. It's going to be, uh, oh, you guys. <laughs> oh, you guys. <laughs> <sighs> That one, if you're in the UK, if you have the right to work in the UK, uh, you'll have the option to work for Crimson Guitars for three days a week, uh, doing production guitars and kit necks and uh, working in the toolmaking department over the year, uh, building up your hand skills, building up your knowledge of how to do all of these tasks in a professional environment. The other two days of the week would be uh, working as a student on your own instruments. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's what's on offer. Now, I am also in the process of becoming accredited as uh, a, a government accredited learning institute and once we are once we get that which is probably going to take a number of years uh, we will then be able to actually have international students on courses from you know one to three to four years even and we will be doing a lot one hell of a lot it's going to be incredible so, uh, yeah, Frugal Fixer says, I wish I had an editor like you. It kills me making a big video and then having to edit it down. Grrr. Yes. Um, I do not miss the editing pro. I lie. Now I miss the editing process because I got quite relatively good at it. I was okay at it. Salitha is great. Uh, but yeah, Bill says, small plane should be called Pepper Plane, uh, as it was a bit of a pig towards the end. I It still is a little bit of a pig. Turns out the blade, I had a, I've, you've got a wedge shape and I've got a wedge shaped blade. And what that means is that when you're planing against the sharp edge, it's actually loosening the wedge, which is just stupidity, really. It's my first ever plane and I just didn't think about it. So what I need to do is I need to flip the chisel around, uh, cut a bevel on it heat treat it and then the wedge will be the other way and then instead of loosening it as you plane it'll be tightening it into the plane and will be better uh, can pecan be used to make a guitar that's from will zudema um, any wood can be used to make a guitar pecan is i think from if memory serves relatively solid and hard uh, if you can get it in the right sizes etc and it's shake free i.e doesn't have cracks and crevices and things yeah, absolutely. Um, I need questions, people, or I'm going to have to, you know, hit you with another advert. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Teddy says, what are your opinions on onboard effects? Jerry Garcia, Buffer. Uh, 
uh, 25 decibel boost in new music mans. And one thing I'm currently building, Fuzz Factory inside a la Mac Bellamy. Fuzz Factory inside a la Mac Bellamy is one of my low points. One of my least fun. One of the most horrible non-me sort of jobs that I have ever done. Of course I was also building a an XY MIDI pad into the same damn guitar. Holy crap, it was not fun. That being said, uh, it's doable. I... Uh, okay, so the Matt Bellamy thing is off to one side in my in my opinion that is overkill and uh, it's it's not because it's a fuzz face it's not because of what the sound does it is because in order to control it properly and dial some You have to stop playing. You can't, and it's just, I mean, it is just a switch, but you can't mid song stop very easily without causing issues. Uh, having multiple effects pedals, and I have built multiple effects pedals into a guitar in the past, um, it just gets in the way of the actual musicianship. Whereas you have this other appendage, I hope. In fact, you have two of them. Your feet are there. Specifically, they evolved to stomp on effects pedals. Maybe it was the other way around. Maybe the effects pedal evolved for the foot. But I'm not going to argue with you about that right now. Um, you can be playing, you can be playing, you can be playing, you stomp the pedal, it changes sound, you stomp the pedal back, it changes sound again. You haven't stopped playing that entire time. That is my argument against effects pedals built into guitars. Now, um, having uh, having a mid-dark boost or something like that, or, or a 50 decibel, or whatever, those are different things. That's, that's closer to what a normal guitar controls do. It's a fine line. It's a fine line indeed. Okay, uh, JS Trucking and Guitars coming with five dollars and says it's your second plane, not your first. Your router plane was the first. Wow. All right, you caught me in a lie. You caught me in a in a in another stupidity. I apologize. You're right, actually. I didn't even realize that this was my first plane. I, probably because it looks like a pile of crap and I really don't like it. Um, that's actually sort of depressed me a little bit. Uh, Vulcan Essence come in with five years and says, Hi Ben, when I take pics, let alone vids when I'm building, I feel like Murphy has his reckoning with me. Any hints you can give me? Cheers. Uh, again, um, that we covered a lot of that in depth in a sort of a 15 or a 20 minute video so seriously go and check that out um and there we go 100 likes 118 viewers 121 viewers 100 likes the, the metrics are going wrong um that being said that being said <sighs> lighting is your friend um uh, uh, the, 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 the single most important thing is that I have got a buttload of lights. And you know, how I've got the lights set up during the evening is completely different to how I've got it set up during the day because I've got so much natural light. Um, and, uh, and play with the lights so that you get the best uh, images you possibly can. When you are photographing a finalized finished built instrument honestly wait for a cloudy day and go outside in indirect sunlight i.e you go in the shade and you've got indirect sunlight um, that is the friendliest light and uh, it gives you amazing guitars I, I, I am convinced that is how I sold my first 40 or 50 guitars taking photographs like that 
Uh, so light is one, and then of course, um, you know, the, the quality of the camera makes a big difference as well. Uh, if you, most people, you know, we've got incredibly good cameras um, in our phones these days, and you can take amazing photographs. So yeah. I suppose the other thing to think about is the angle at which you take those pictures. Um, it's the rule of thirds. Look into the rule of thirds, for example. Seriously, that, that actually there. The rule of thirds, Google that with regards to taking photographs. Then go and uh, uh, imbibe half of the videos on Peter McKinnon's channel. So when he's not drinking coffee, when he's actually talking about, uh, well, he, he talks about photos quite a lot. Uh, go and watch a couple of videos by Peter McKinnon on, on photographs and all of that jazz. He's incredible. He seems to have got a little bit more annoying. He's become, he's become a little bit annoying recently, which is strange because I really like him. But... <laughs> But go check him out. It's it's one of those things. Um, do you know? No, it's not that he's annoying. It's that I've got hair envy. That's it. I've just done this. Is you guys are my therapy? Okay. Phil Gurky coming with five dollars super chat. Thank you very much, Phil. Again, it says I use a table saw to partially resaw for my tops and cut the remainder by hand. My saw sucks. Should I go Japanese pull saw? No. Uh, or a Western rip saw? Um, teeth per inch. Okay, so my experience with the Japanese pull saw for exactly that kind of cut made me look like a first day woodworker. It was nasty. It's a totally different technique and I had some Japanese fans or at least woodworkers who use Japanese saws a lot. You can never really tell from a, from a username. Uh, specifically come through and tell me what I was doing wrong and I need to take it in practice. I don't use saws very much, but a Japanese, uh, a Western rip saw, even a, for that task, I would just use a standard store-bought $10, $15 or pound uh, hard point saw from, from your big box store. Um, hell, this is me. This is a dude. <sighs> Who owns a freaking vintage tool shop saying just buy a hard point saw. Uh, the, the teeth are really good at doing that and yes it's a it's a rip cut. Technic okay if you're using a vintage saw it's a rip cut so you want three or four TPI. You want a, a meaty freaking saw like seriously chunky. Uh, cross cut is finer teeth so a, a lot more teeth per inch basically. Um, but a Western uh, hard point saw that you get at a hardware store, those are designed to work well-ish for both. Um, okay, now, <sighs> now you see, I told you I'm using a different camera, and that's fine. Uh, the issue with this camera is it turns out the battery life on it absolutely sucks, and I've been checking it throughout this whole process. It's been fine, it's been fine, it's been on half for ages, and suddenly the red battery icon is flashing in it and telling me that uh, it's going to die. So, uh, there we go. Um, yeah. If you have any burning questions, hit me up. Let's see if... Uh, if you want me to keep the stream going, then, yeah, the camera will die, I'll change the battery, and we'll keep on going for a bit. But um, let me know what you think. Uh, David Hardeman says, will you be burning the fretboard on the acoustic to get a different color in the body? That mahogany is too nice to stain. What's wrong with stain? No, I'm not going to burn it. I am going to stain it. Um, and uh, it'll be fine. Trust me, it'll be all right. Uh, I don't want to burn a fretboard. I suppose I could do it prior, pre... Oh, now you've got me going down a whole different path. 
I'm wondering about burning it while it is literally still attached to the original piece of wood. I wonder what that would do. Maybe I'll do that as an experiment. We'll see. But I do think the stain is the uh, is just the best way. Okay. Frugal Fixer is cutting his extra bandsaw in half and adding four inches. My problem resawing solved. That sounds like a an advert I saw recently. Um, when I uh, Neil Jobs says when I did my top, I used the table saw and finished the cut with a standard hand saw, leveling it with a plane after was a doddle. That's exactly how I would. That's exactly how I would do it if I was using, um, if I had access to, it. if I wasn't doing a hand tool only build basically. Um, Okay. Well, wow. okay, there's a bunch of... Uh... Oh, okay. Okay, V, I completely misconstrued your question and went off on a, on a total thing talking about uh, videos, etc. He says, Ben, I meant my Luthier mojo declines when I wanted to create digital evidence while I am building guitars. Cheers. <sighs> okay, honestly... Uh, the people who watched my live stream of me fumbling about my workshop for six and a half hours building that plane, they understand that actually what most of you guys see in the edited videos is heavily edited. And actually, a lot of the time, it's me fumbling around on my knees trying to find a goddamn tool that I knew I had three minutes ago and then finding it on my workbench. Um, what I'm trying to say A good photograph from an advantageous angle or good editing tastefully done can hide all manner of sins now I am known for showing everything and the processes and the mistakes and I'm I'm happy to do that I'm a big boy I can deal with it but uh, if you wanted to hide if you wanted to you can do that and a lot of yeah you can do that um crikey hold on so there was a there was a hell of a lot of uh, super chats i need to catch my place again and i really do appreciate the super chats people it, it, it every little bit helps massively uh okay gina short gina how are you sent five dollars uh says any updates or eta on the travel guitar kit i love the channel and all the valuable info you share thank you very much gina i do appreciate it um the last i heard i took my hand-drawn plans to to crimson guitars and uh, the plans are being digitized i have gone and at auction finally bought specifically for this kit this was the justification. I have bought a giant industrial sander thicknesser. I am talking, you can put doors through this bloody thing. I am so excited. Like, supremely excited. I've wanted, I've wanted this machine for a decade or more. And uh, um, this, is, this is a project that is happening and it is happening quick. In fact, I am sincerely hoping to be able to show you some progress um, I soon, very soon. So yeah, um, if you have, uh, I'm assuming that you've dropped an email through to the shop, uh, letting us know that you are interested. If anybody else out there watching this is interested in the uh, the acoustic travel guitar kit, then email shop at crimsonguitars.com. Just say, hey, I'm registering interest. It doesn't mean that we'll force you to buy it in the end. It's just we'll drop you another email back when the time comes. And uh, you will also get a discount on it when it launches. So uh, yeah, it is. Wow, my 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 video is just gone. It is well in hand. Okay, so well, let's have another question, and I can do that audibly while I'm changing this thing. Uh, Your lie just means that you will have to build more planes, Ben. This is from Ivan Wizard. Uh, one of every kind of plane we thinks will make up for forgetting the router plane build. Uh, I, I, I agree. I do agree. I think that um, my... 
in the end, okay, let's put it this way. So there was a comment, and I do read um, a lot, as many of the comments on the main YouTube channel as humanly possible. Um, and I respond to many, 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 many of them. Uh, it, it actually, it takes up quite a lot of my sitting at a computer time, to be honest. And this one guy this morning was like, all right, Ben, enough of this hand tool crap. I'm not interested in these hand tool builds. Stop doing it. I'm only here for the guitar building. And uh, I, I replied politely <laughs> and said, look, you're here for guitar building. That's fine. But quite frankly, I think that I think that if you're into guitar building, if you want to be a guitar builder, then you necessarily have to be interested in tools. You have to think. You have to want to know more about hand planes and uh, and how this all works. And uh, and I'm not going to stop making tools. I'm not going to stop restoring tools or or any of that stuff. I'm going to keep doing this, and you it just is what it is. Uh, it's up to you to not like planes, but uh, but it's your fault. I'm still going to do it. Uh, I did end by saying we're going to make sure that uh, every video it's obvious what it is whether it's a hand tool build or a tool restoration or a guitar video, and you guys can choose to, to watch or, or, or not to watch. Um, and uh, that's just uh, the way it goes. Uh, anyway, we're back. We have, uh, we have video, and, uh, and that is good. So uh, anyway, Gina, thank you very much for asking about the, the travel guitar. I need to flip this screen over because that's very off-putting. There we go. It's a project that I'm very excited about. Okay. Uh, Donald Moran has sent five pounds super chat. Thank you very much, uh, Donald. And says hi, Ben. I'm loving your hand tool only acoustic build. I'm a very amateur maker. I, I feel that way some days too. Uh, I'm a very amateur maker, making mostly acoustic instruments with mostly hand tools. Respect. I mean, seriously, that's the way to start. I spent the first two years of my instrument making experience studying at West Dean College uh, down near Chichester in West Sussex, uh, building early stringed musical instruments, and I sucked. I, I truly sucked. Um, a large portion of it was just learned learning how to sharpen stuff effectively and uh, avoiding any actual hard work. But in the end, it has made me who I am today. And uh, yeah, whether you're an amateur builder or not, spending your time now learning how to use hand tools is going to, as you say, okay, fine, I'm going to get a router or bands or whatever. It's all going to be for the good. So, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm loving. I'm tempted to go all hand tool only. It, it would be amazingly cool. But anyway, um, thank you. Thank you for your support. And thank you for watching. Uh, Rob Phoenix is coming with five pounds. It says, seeing the other side of your workshop made me feel much better about my own organized chaos. Thank you for that. Uh, the, the other side of my workshop since that live stream is a little bit tidier now because I was so mortified actually at what it looked like. Um, a flat surface is a flat surface and it will become a dumping ground for inordinate amounts of stuff. In fact, to be honest, I cleared off my router table yesterday made it absolutely, I mean, literally yesterday. I haven't been in the workshop today, apart from this live stream. And that flat, flat surface now has a jazz guitar, a tub of artists masking fluid. It's got three HDMI cables and a bunch of other HDMI links and 
com- converters and things. It's got my daughter's guitar and it's got a, a bowl full of um, <sighs> that black sticky stuff that uh, engravers use to stick metal to. And a bunch of paperwork. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just it's just impossible. Um, but yeah, the workshop's a total mess. If you haven't yet watched that live stream, it's worth clicking through just just for a bit of a laugh. Okay. Uh, Vulcan uh, says, uh, Hi Ben, how would you triage a guitar you haven't built yourself, whether to cremate it or commit it to intensive luthery care? Cheers, V. Uh, all right, uh, V, I would... Look, it's, it's there's two things. One, is it a client's guitar and are they willing to pay the amount of hours that it's going to take? Period. Okay. So the, the first thing really is and has to be one of is the time that I'm going to spend on this and the money that I'm going to make through that time worth it? Is the guy going to pay me enough? Is the girl going to pay me enough to, to do this repair? Um, is the guitar itself worth doing that to? So for me, for me, I'm a little bit different. For me, the product is one, a repair guitar, to a video and the videos earn me a small amount of ad revenue we're talking an average video crimson will earn me maybe 150 200 pounds or something like that so if i've got a repair and i can think to myself hey you know this does really well i'm probably going to get a couple hundred quid over you know a few months uh, in ad revenue um, and I can sort of think, okay, well, you know, I'm going to go overboard on this repair. I know I am. This, this jazz guitar that I'm repairing, you're going to see the video soon. It's gone completely off-piste. I'm not charging the customer anymore because I know about the ad revenue and it's, it's, it's fine. I'm going with the original quote and we're there. And he appreciates it. Uh, but if you're dealing with a customer, the money is where it's at. The other thing, though, is you and your development as a luthier. Now, I sincerely regret not doing more repairs. I actively have avoided repairs for decades. And prior to that, didn't actively really publish the fact that I did them because I'm a guitar builder. I'm not a repair person. Uh, I enjoy guitar building. I enjoy taking some, something that doesn't exist and creating something. I love it. It re, it feeds. It, that's how I get my energy. That and, and you guys. So I wish I'd spent more time repairing because I would be a better guitar builder now as a result. Period. So in the same way that the ad revenue on the channel subsidizes some repairs or some jobs for me, um, you need to think to yourself, all right, I'm going to charge this guy a couple hundred quid. It's really a 500 quid job, but one, I'm going to make a friend for life, I hope. Two, I'm going to get to do this particular job that I haven't done before, and it's going to improve me as a luthier. And next time, I'll charge 500 quid because I've got a little bit more experience. Um, the final thing is, is this guitar going to be worth more than the repair, for example, in the end? Now, one is financial, two it is uh, sentimental, and that's up to you and the customer. But uh, there we go. <sighs> Sean Forsyth um, asks, do you have any recommendations for high quality gouge brands? Also, is it, a, it is, is it catastrophic to have a slight bow in the fretboard wood before it's glued? Absolutely not catastrophic whatsoever. Um, you are going to be using the truss rod to create a bit of a bow in the fretboard once it's finished. So, no. Uh, as long as with a couple of fingers, if you've got a flat workshop, worktop, workbench, push down on either side. If it goes back easily without any you know, great strain or pain in your fingers, it's fine. It'll glue flat to the neck. The neck will hold it down. Your truss rod will counteract things. 
no issues whatsoever. Do not worry it. Do not worry it. Do not worry about it. There's a battery I need to put on charge. Okay. Uh, the first question is, do you have any recommendations for high-quality gouge brands? Okay, first of all, uh, vintage through vintagetoolshop.com. Uh, I would say <sighs> Addis, JB Addis, um, well, any of the Addis. They were actually brothers. And they sort of split up and, and went their own ways. Um, hell, my brother, my brother watched me. My brother watched me... Uh, fiddle about splitting that thing and he's just recently taken up blacksmithing of sorts and uh, he made me this super cool Japanese wood splitter which uh, yeah I need to play with um, okay so so there's that uh, but you're after modern brands so <laughs> Veritas, if they do gouges, I'm not sure they do. Who's the Canadian company? It depends on how much you want to spend. It really does. I have used Ashley Isles. They're a UK company. They're hand forged. I've used Ashley Isles for years. They're absolutely great. Uh, Robert Sorby make very good tools. Uh, I haven't tried their gouges, but I have tried their chisels, and that's another UK company that is absolutely great. And you know, uh, very, you know. I like them. If Narex do gouges, that's uh, a little bit more affordable than the handmade brands, but very, very well made, very good steel, and absolutely fine. Uh, there are things like the Record Power carving gouge sets, which I wouldn't touch. They're just made in China to whatever quality standard the company, the factory, tends to put out. It's not what Rick, well, Rick or Power, it's Power. <laughs> power is in the name. Um, there is a brand whose name I've completely forgotten now. And I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to tell you. Yeesh. I suck. I really suck. Um, I'm just googling this, sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, Henry Taylor, there we go. So Henry Taylor are prolific. They're available all over the place. They're incredibly well made. You can also get vintage ones, uh, which are fine. File, P-F-E-I-L, are fantastic quality. Uh, Woodcarvers, gouges, they're incredible. They're, well, I've said incredible quite a lot, actually. Um, at that price point, you're looking at uh, six carving gouges for 160 quid, on eBay at least. Uh, very, very, very nice. Um, Crown, I have not used. That's another UK brand. I think they're okay. I've used their turning tools before. But, um, yeah, Henry Taylor. Wow. Stop it, Ben. You're on a live stream. Stop looking at tools. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Forgive me. Heart of Oak. Heart of Oak, how are you? Um, coming with the super chat and says uh, here is a donation for the Christmas present you forgot to buy or order for your wife we've all done that cheers Bruce thank you very much Bruce I still need to use that wood um, my wife has decided to become the opposite of me I am a collector a collator of things and she is on this major, major binge of getting, just getting stuff out. Um, I'm literally going behind her saying, no, no, no I'll, I'll take that umbrella and put that in the van. I needed another umbrella in the van. Oh, that, no, no, that's a, that's a, that, I'll sell that in the tool shop. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to buy her a Christmas present. I think, I think that uh, my marital status actually depends on me finding 
digital presence for her. So thank you very much for this digital money. I appreciate it. Um, I think I'm going to buy like a lifetime membership in Audible or something. Um, anyway, uh, Vulcan Essence come in with another super chat. Said, "Hi Ben, money and effort aside, how do you diagnose a guitar from being salvageable or being a good campfire material?" Cheers. You can't. I can't. I can't. It's that's not a question that I can answer. Um, it very much depends. It's all about experience. It's all about whether I think that I can fix it. Um, you know, for example, I could have even the most destroyed guitar come in here and I could rebuild it from the ground up if necessary. Uh, I've got a guitar from the 18 somethings in, in, in the house and it needs a major restoration. It's going to take months. It's going to take a lot of time, but I want to do it. Uh, I could have a 20 quid car boot special uh, that has been stomped through the back and had the headstock broken off. I could fix it. Absolutely. I could, I could make an entirely brand new neck. I could scarf a new headstock on. Could be a fun video, actually. Uh, I could make a complete new back. I could bend new sides. At what point does it become a new guitar? Obviously. But it is purely about whether I have the energy for it. Um, and whether I think that I can do it justice. That's the other real question. But it's, it, it, well, it's triage. It's, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. You can't really... Um, yeah, can't really go from there. Uh, Rob Tootle has come in with a question, said, I may have to introduce a neck break angle on my current build. It's a bolt-on. Is it better to adjust the neck heel or the pocket? Makes no difference whatsoever. Personally, I adjust the neck heel normally uh, if I've got the room to do it. If it's a standard Fender style, you probably don't have the room to do it, so really put it into the uh, neck pocket. If you are doing that, um, I would say um, a standard standard hexagonal HB pencil at the bridge line. Put your uh, put your template up on that so the template goes from from that pencil. That will give you about a one and a half degree angle, which is about what you want. You guys aren't giving me uh, many would you rathers of late. I kind of miss those. Ravnox, I do not understand your question. Say to Ben you want to buy one from his brother and someone will come in with some if he has them, either his brother or mother or someone. Okay. Um, I actually do understand that. Hey, Rav. <laughs> I didn't actually properly say goodbye to you the other day. That's been eating at me for the, uh, for the rest of the, the weekend. Lee Nielsen, you can't get Lee Nielsen chisels. Uh, but they're very good as well. That's from Ben Timon. IBC is a suggestion from J Hammer Forty Two for Canadian. I didn't know that IBC did gouges. Their chisels are cryogenically treated, and I don't. They're a little bit more brittle than I would like. I've got a set. Um, I think they're A One rather than O Two as well, which you know, I'm not sure what difference that really makes. But anyway. Uh, Ben Timer says Richter are worth the extra. Wood River. Narex Two Cherries, Stubai. Oh, Stubai are an option. Thanks from Nick Guitar. Stubai are great. I've not heard of Dear Brown before. Oh, here's a Would You Rather. This is from Rob Pootle. And this was from a while ago, so before I asked for them. It says, Would you rather build hand tools or guitars? Whee. <laughs> <laughs> How perceptive of you, sir. How very, very perceptive. Uh, if I had to have a choice, at this stage, I've built hundreds of guitars, I would go tools. And it's one, because I'm only really getting into... <laughs> I own a company that makes tools. The tool you, We're talking about hand planes and, and fine things like this. Uh, I've been building guitars for a long time and 
I could stop if I had to and start a new career. It would be fine. Um, the real thing is that plane took me six and a half, seven hours, including noodling around with the cameras and finding bits and pieces. Uh, the 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 dopamine rush from finishing a whole thing from start to finish and going, hey, I made this thing and it's done in that space of time, as opposed to months and months and months. If I got to do that every day, I'd, I'd you know, woohoo. So, uh, yeah, very good question. Very good question indeed. Uh, Luther for Bill's come in as well with another super chat. said, would you rather build a snare drum or a hand tool only Les Paul out of Epi? Um, a hand tool only Les Paul out of, I'm going to suggest you probably meant something like Wenge. I'm looking at the letters near EPR. Anyway, um, I would rather build a snare drum. Because that's something that actually you buy a kit and most of the stuff's already there. I think that I could build a pretty mean snare drum. I, I want to do that for fun one day. I really do. Um, that being said, I do, <clears throat> I do like the idea of... Uh, doing a hand tool, not a hand tool only build. I do rather like the idea of doing an absolute proper full-on replica of a 59 Les Paul kind of a thing. I think that would be fun. Maybe a gold top, P90 gold top. Mm. All right. Okay, Vulcan Essence come back. Uh, talking about the um, triaging guitars again. He says, hi, Ben. Uh, your last answer is a great lesson. In the end, sky is the limit. As long as you can envision it, there must be a way to get there. Uh, that's Rocky in Luthery. <laughs> thank you for your inspiration. Cheers, we. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, yeah. There's so much. There's so much that can be done. And in the end, I understand that I'm the luckiest person. My situation is that as long as I'm making something and filming it, I can spend as long as I want on that thing. And for the most part, it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, Joe has come back in with uh, JS Trucking Guitar says, uh, I believe he meant epoxy resin, aka EPR. Okay. A hand tool only epoxy resin guitar. That's even worse. Definitely the snare drum. Definitely the snare drum. Okay. Uh, Ravnox says, It's okay, Ben. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I probably won't actually be there. Um, I have got family stuff, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to say goodbye to you now. I'm sure you'll be back one day. Um, Anthony Cuncliffe said, Would you rather never get a splinter again or never buy another watch again? Go and wash your mouth out with soap, young man. Um Definitely, I, I would spend my life, I would happily spend the rest of my life with a splinter or two a day, as long as I could feed my watch addiction. Now, I understand that that is a problematical statement, and I need to go and unpack this. As I've said, you guys are my therapy. <laughs> um, I love the feeling I get. I do. Um, I like watches. I like buying them. It's a problem. Uh, I've got half a dozen up that I'm just selling through um, through Watchmaster. I, I managed to cull the collection, as I said I would. Anyway, uh, 
Okay. In the study, it uh, says, how much are you into novel manufacturing, computer modeled, additive and subtractive machining, that kind of thing? Or do you prefer to leave that to others and work by hand? Personally, me, I work by hand. I use the routers and all that sort of stuff. I've got this workshop. I've got this thing sorted. However, I own Crimson Guitars. We have a giant Bridport CNC machine that uh, until, well, in its last life, it was machining uh, air, air, aerospace uh, aluminium parts for airplanes and bits and pieces like that. You know, full on, um, I think it's an 18 wheel hydraulic tool changer. It's mind-blowingly cool. And that is one of three or four CNC machines that we have. I have a beautiful laser cutter. Rephrase, I have a laser cutter. It's big, it looks nice. We've had some issues with it uh, intermittently firing. One time was when the, uh, uh, the, the, the the door was actually open and the person cleaning it had just moved their hand away from the laser. So that was fun. Uh, it's still under warranty and we are purchasing an extended warranty for it as well. I think you can see why. Uh, I do not have yet a 3D printer. Uh, but that is definitely something that I would enjoy experimenting with. I think a combination of CNC and laser and 3D printing means that we can really do some amazing things in Luthery. Uh, personally, I have in the past been able to, to take an idea and draw 3D and then have its machine. But there are people that work for me that are a million times better at that than I ever will or could be. And that's fine. That's why they get paid the big bucks. So I don't have to do it. So the question is, as a company, I absolutely understand that those processes are the way of the future and they're the only way that a company can really and truly um, be successful. It's by embracing that. As I've said earlier in this in this stream, though, for me, the guitar itself is only part of the product. I am making videos. Those videos are inspiring people to go to Crimson Guitars and buy Luthier's tools from us, I hope, or guitar building kits from us, which are sort of 50% CNC and 50% hand. I mean, you cannot build a guitar without a lot of handwork, and that goes for kick guitars as well. Um, and I'm inspiring people to come on our guitar building courses. We're, if I'm not wrong, the biggest guitar building school in the world at this stage. Um, COVID notwithstanding even, we teach hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people a year how to build guitars in person. And my job as a YouTuber, as an influencer, I hate that word, is to get people excited and G'd up and into doing these things. GGBO is, a, is another thing. It's about getting people making and loving making and loving tools and stuff. And if those people love the hand tools and build guitars, chances are if they want to make a career of it, they're going to have to learn CNC and 3D printers and all that jazz. So it's all a great big smorgasbord of fun stuff. Bring it on, I say. <sighs> This is a good stream, guys, isn't it? I'm having fun. Um, oh, Luther, B B <laughs> Luther for builds. It keeps on getting worse. He's come in with another super chat. said, no, Epi. Uh, it's a wood, and it's hard AF. E-P-A-Y. Uh, Epe. It's Epe. It's kind of like teak. It's super hard. If I If I recall correctly... I mean, it's a hard hell of fuck no. I know, I just swore after not swearing just now. That's funny. Uh, it's also very, 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 uh, if I'm right, it's silica high. It's got lots of silicates and waxes and things inside of the wood, which blood the hell out of your tools. No, snare drum, hell. Full drum kit. I would rather build a full drum kit than, than a hand tool only build out of eBay. Uh, Vulcan's come back in and said, Hi Ben, would you rather sharpen a chisel with paper or write meeting minutes with MS Office Word printed on the very same paper? Uh, 
Uh, okay, so yeah, technically I can sharpen a chisel using paper, i.e. 3M, we've talked about them today, uh, make some incredible uh, <sighs> abrasive papers. So sandpaper, yes, I would, I would definitely do that. I am not, I am not good at all in any way, shape or form at uh, the whole office thing. This is why Tom at Crimson Guitars exists, so that I don't have to. Uh, Nick Guitar says, would you rather build only hand build, only Wenge guitars or only tables made out of MTF the whole time? I think I probably slipped my wrists. Um, uh, no, hand build only Wenge guitars. I'm not sure how I would do it. Uh, you'd end up with textured guitars and the feature. Um, yeah. Uh, Will Zudema says, get a PR USA 3DC printer. They're made for manufacturing. Um, I'll check that out. I... I do not like green eggs and ham. I don't like plastic. I don't like... So this is the reason why I haven't gone into it yet. When we get to a point where we can afford a printer, a 3D printer, that is printing in um, cellulose or, uh, or, or metal, for that matter, things like that, those that's where I start getting interested. If it's literally just plastic... I'm sorry, I don't want to be responsible for that much more plastic going into the world. I just, I just don't. Um, but we'll get there. Um, Creevera says, those crimson made chisels below your other ones, what's their width? That was a set I made a long time ago. They're uh, just under one, just under two, and just under three millimeters wide. Uh, Max, I owe you a scraper. I owe you a custom scraper. I've just remembered Okay. <laughs> yes, I am using the camera that overheated last time, but I'm not recording. So uh, we'll see. Um, PQ Deads has come in with a super chat and said, Would you rather make a left handed guitar or a right handed bass? Physically impossible. I would rather make a right-handed bass twin neck. Not physically impossible. I would rather make. I would rather do both. Literally, we've we've got a right-handed bass here and a left-handed guitar on this side as a twin neck. That'd be so cool. All right. I think at this point I've probably just lost it. <clears throat> we've um... <laughs> yeah. Where are we? We've been going for nearly two hours. I've drunk most of this. Um, and uh, there we go. <sighs> okay, to answer that question seriously, th the, the right-handed bass would be easier for me because you saw during the hand tool only build, I picked up my Triton drill. Have I put it back? No, I haven't, thankfully. Um, oh, here it is. Whoa. I need to get this far away from the workbench. I picked this up and I drilled the holes because this is the tool that I always use. What I wanted to do was pick up this gorgeous 130 odd year old Miller's Falls beauty and use that, but I entered default mode. So a left-handed instrument takes more concentration. Uh, so yeah, I would rather do the right-handed bass because it's just easier. It doesn't matter whether it's a bass or a guitar. Um, with that being said, other than the fact that I would have to concentrate just a little bit more, and remember, I film everything I do, so I'm not only building guitars, I am also making a video, and half of my brain is on the video. It's on the batteries, it's on the data wrangling, it's on you know all of this sort of stuff, the shot. Um, so I'm never really concentrating, I'm never really concentrating on the guitar building. In fact, half of the time I've got my ISA tunes in and I'm listening to a podcast or an Audible book. Um, no, I'm not sponsored by Audible. Get your audio, audio book on me. Um, so actually, most of the time when I'm guitar building, my brain is in two other places at the same time anyway. So yeah, I think... 
either, either one. I think that I should build a left-handed guitar on the on the channel though, just because people ask for it every now and then. We'll have it in stock forever. But hey, it is what it is. Okay. Lucifer builds built a thirteen hundred square foot deck from Ipe. Crikey. <laughs> Dang Navit says, fuck! The right-handed bass, left-handed guitar, twin neck. That was my GGBO design. <laughs> Go for it. Lisa's asking for the results of the survey. I was wondering about that myself. I haven't seen that yet. Um, that's another thing for me to check out. Um, done. Uh, at this point, I think we've had enough time. So, uh, yeah, that's really good to good to know. Barry Krishna said, would you rather use mahogany or, or walnut or Tudor wood for bracing and why? Uh, no on the Tudor wood. Tudor wood does not have enough grain. Uh, walnut, if if walnut is straight grained enough, I would say walnut would be fine, except it, uh, it depends. European walnut, yes, 100%. That or mahogany, fine. Either of those, as long as you've got straight grain and relatively tight grain. American black walnut is tends to be a wider grain, so I probably wouldn't use that. I would say straight grain mahogany with a tight grain for bracing. And it's about that tone transfer. It's about having nice, tight, straight grain to uh, not only transfer tone, but also st have strength in built. Uh, we're obviously talking about an acoustic style instrument here. Uh, now, the real proper wood to do that with is is a soft wood with a tight grain so it doesn't matter whether it's spruce or pine a slow growth pine with you know very 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 tight grain or um yellow pine from a from a kitchen table from 200 years ago don't cut up tables that are 200 years old they deserve better but you know what i mean lightweight yet strong tight grained soft woods are the real way forward Whew. Frugal Fixer says, I know your battle, just don't fight it as well as you do. Uh, it takes time. Um, an ambidextrous multi double neck guitar from Ben Tyman. Uh, Get on your feet music says, Hi Ben, if you are new to guitar building and could buy one hand tool as a gift from Crimson, what would it be? Uh, something to do with fret leveling. I would suggest. I, I would suggest the essential fret leveling address in toolkit, which technically is four or five tools. Uh, if oh, seriously, that that has to be it. I'm sorry. Uh, a, I suppose a leveling file or a leveling beam. If you really had only one, um, it would go leveling beam, leveling file, because you have to have something to level it. <laughs> <laughs> fret crowning file this is an order of importance fret crowning file because you really need to have to crown the frets you could with hard work polish the frets with just sandpaper that you can get at the local shops so you know the fret rubber is not absolutely essential okay the fret rocker really is you have to have the fret rocker so that you can see whether what's going on. And the same thing with the notched straight edge. You have to have a notched straight edge um, so that you can make absolutely certain the neck is straight before you do anything. So, yeah, essential fret leveling addressing tool good. I'm sorry. It's more than one. Um, Yeah, it's a difficult one. Pitch pine from Virgin Forests. That's coming from Ben Tyman. Uh, yeah, pitch pine. That stuff's um, harder than much hardwoods, actually. 
Ah, Sudar Carvin says, I have a neck that's maple on the sides, Wenge in the middle. I'm finishing it with Danish oil, and I don't know how, but there are dirty spots showing up on the maple now. Should I just sand it? Yeah, I mean, at this stage, if the dirty spots are in the... <laughs> yeah, okay. So your best bet is to shellac. I had a question about shellac on the phone. Um... Basically, the, the you've got to sand and be more careful, essentially. Uh, try and seal the maple before you go anywhere near the Wenge. So put a couple of coats of oil on the maple prior to going anywhere near the Wenge, if you can do it. Now, I did... Garage Master Guitars asked this question last week. Uh, he says, Hi Ben, returning to the cold weather finish on the scrap wood guitar, which looks amazing. Uh, after a bit of research, I'm thinking about going with shellac. Bottle of shellac right there, just off camera. Um, it would appear that shellac works in cold conditions. I'm not sure how hard it is to finish, very hard. Um, but as I only noodle occasionally, I'm hoping it would hold up, at least until the warmer months when I could then try 2K, which I presume will go on over the shellac with no problem. Shellac is the uh, uh, lady of negotiable affection of the finishing world, shall we say, uh, and goes with anybody. So yes, uh, shellac is the finish of choice on many acoustic guitars. In fact, you'll see me playing around with shellac in this jazz guitar repair that will be going live maybe next week. We'll see how tomorrow goes. Um, <coughs> Yeah, Luther for Bills, you just said a dirty word. <laughs> um, shellac is a very, very good choice. Uh, be aware that uh, you'll probably need to wear a mask after a while. It is still spirit-based. Uh, and I use meths, actually, and that gives me a headache. So, yeah, gas mask, ventilation, etc. Lots of thin coats. Uh, it's used on classical guitars, it's used on jazz guitars, it, it was the finish of choice. French polishing videos don't necessarily go all the way down French polishing because it's a crazy old skill. But if you get it right, you can get an incredible finish on your guitar just using shellac. So yes, give it a go. I didn't know that it was good in cold weather but that's that that is good to know uh you can buff it up you can shine it up it's very hard wearing just don't let anybody throw a glass of whiskey at you or something like that because it will melt it also doesn't like heat too much so uh, yeah oh crimson has a nice protractor jeff's guitar says crimson has a very nice protractor you're right This, uh, thank you very much. Uh, that is a really, really cool tool. Uh, I was thinking more what sort of the, the f uh, first tool that a luthier would need, and it's all about the leveling, really. So crowning file or leveling file, one of those two. Both of them. <laughs> Frugal Fixer Shop says exactly the essential fret leveling kit is great. I love mine. Thanks, Ben and GGBO. Uh, that was our pleasure. Lisa says, uh, Whoa. Uh, I'm not sure who she's answering this. So, uh, Anthony Cuncliffe says, So last week you shared your pain of not being able to buy guitars you desire because you can build them. What dream guitar would you build given the chance? Gibson L5. Gibson L5 early headstock. Um, I'm going to be doing more acoustic -y builds moving forward. And I do feel the need to do a uh, um, Baroque build at some point as well. Uh, Dr. Satan. Fantastic username. Ben, I just purchased the water-based wipe on lacquer. Will it stick to ABS binding? Yes, it will. Uh, yes, yes, it will. It will. I've done that. 
Dane Mabbitt says, do not ever waste whiskey by throwing at anyone. I, I wanted to say that in a Scottish accent, and I'm not going to even try that. Um, Jaybird Custom says, Ben, how do you pronounce it? Basswood, basswood, or basswood? It... Basswood, basswood, or basswood? Uh, I think I say basswood, but I don't think there is a particular way. Um, yeah, it is what it is. All right, everybody, look, seriously, we are 28 seconds away from a two-hour live stream, and I want to keep it under that if at all possible. So, look, seriously, thank you very much for everything. I seriously appreciate your support. Thank you for coming. We've had, you know, a bunch of people, 112 people, 119 likes, and, yeah. It's been a good stream. I will be back next week, same time, with another one. Thank you for everything. I love you. Good night.